There's something that I've been putting off buying for this Forerunner ever since I bought it, which was like five plus years ago. And I've been meaning to get around to it. It's been on my list of things to do and I haven't done it up until now. So today we're gonna to take care of the secondary air injection system on this Forerunner. There's two different versions of these fourth gen V8 Forerunners. There's the 2003 and 2004 models, which didn't have any uh, secondary air injection systems. Then when you moved up to a 2005 and newer model, um, it came with a few upgrades. It, they made a bit more power, a bit more torque. They also included variable valve timing. However, the downside is they also included this kind of uh, more complicated emission system. And as with many other Toyota vehicles, mostly the Toyota trucks, the Tundras, Sequoias, uh, Lexus GX470s, it's known for failing. And Toyota is not rock solid on every single system that they ever designed for vehicles. So this is a, a common failure for these trucks. And if you were to get it fixed at a dealership, you're looking at like two, three, even $4,000 to repair it. One of the reasons why it's so important to either repair or avoid issues with your secondary air injection system is because it won't just throw a check engine light in these things. It's gonna put the, the vehicle into limp mode, which cuts all the power. It makes it like almost impossible to drive. I would borderline, I would go as far as saying it's almost unsafe to drive because if you're trying to merge onto a highway or something, you just don't have any power. So you're holding up traffic. It's just not good. So very expensive fix, and it's not something that you can just leave alone. It's not like having a code for an O2 sensor or something that you're like, well, I'll just get bad gas mileage until I get around to fixing it. No, if this fails on your vehicle, you're gonna be in some trouble and it's not gonna be drivable. So when Derek at Hewitt Technologies reached out to me and, and offered me this kit, I said, yep, absolutely. I don't have to think about, twice about it. I'm, I already had planned to install this thing. And uh, so he offered to send me a kit out. This is their Gen 1 V36H kit. So this is what all is included. Um, they really push their, their customer service and um, their communication after the sale, which I think is, is good to see. Just because you are dealing with you know electronics and uh, this is kind of above and beyond a lot of regular handyman's <laughs> knowledge. You know, we're dealing with electronics on, and computer systems on a Toyota. This is different than just doing an oil change or something. So if something goes wrong, you can call these guys or email them or, or whatever. And they're gonna, hopefully they should be able to walk you through whatever issue you're having. Now it's worth mentioning that I don't have any uh, check engine light or codes or anything on my forerunner right now. As far as I know, my system is working perfectly fine. But you can do this as preventative maintenance if you want to avoid having any problems. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is bypassing the system while it's still working. So all the equipment is going to stay in place and it's still in good shape. It's just not being used anymore. So at any point I can take this bypass kit out and everything still functions like normal. Now, if your system has failed, you can also fix it with this kit. But there's two different kits that Hewitt Technologies offers, and it depends on what kind of failure you're experiencing with your system. There's a few things that can go wrong, a few different codes. So you really need, to, if you're unsure, you really need to talk to them and find out exactly which kit you want. Now what this Gen 1 kit is gonna do is the, the ECU is gonna register not ready for this monitor, for this, this uh, air injection system. It's, it's not gonna ready up. And now here in Ontario, we don't have emissions testing anymore, so I don't have to worry about this. But even when we did, I'm pretty sure we were allowed to have one or two monitors not ready and still pass. But it's something to consider that if you still have like an OBD2 plug-in emission test, then you might need to be able to reverse this and unplug it. Now the Gen 2 system, the Gen 2 bypass, it will be readied up and the monitor will be working but it's a much more involved installation. You're, you're doing much more involved wiring and stuff. So this is the, the easy plug and play version. In this case, we're leaving all of the components on my Forerunner. I'm just gonna be essentially shutting them off. So here's what's included in the kit. This is the main piece right here. This is, a, this is the bypass kit that plugs into the MAF sensor. And then we also have an extra wire. This one is gonna run from your starter relay, I believe and that's gonna trigger everything to turn on when it's supposed to. And then they also include a pair of block off plates. Now, because my system is still functioning fine, I'm not gonna install the block off plates and also because they're mounted on the, 
the headers, and I, if you're not aware, I have aftermarket headers on this. These are Doug Thorley short tubes. There's an extra pipe on these newer model V8 uh, exhaust manifolds, and that runs to the, the secondary air injection pump. So the block off plate is gonna go on the end of that where the gasket and the, like the connection is. I don't really wanna mess with that right now, so I'm gonna skip that. And then the only other thing is, these are our detailed instructions. You can see we've got pictures in here, very straightforward stuff and uh, very detailed. So they definitely covered all the bases when they, they designed this kit. So I'm gonna start by connecting the module to the MAF sensor here. So it's just a matter of unplugging this connector. And then this is essentially just like a jumper connector that we're gonna plug into one end and into the other. It's gonna snap in place there. And then we're gonna connect the other side in here. Of course, you always wanna wait for the click and then do your pull test. So this is done. This is connected, it's that, it's that simple. So I need to find a place to mount this little module. And you wanna keep it somewhere cool. You don't wanna be anywhere near the engine itself. Definitely not near the exhaust manifold or the block or anything. Um, so I'm gonna take a look and see where I'm gonna mount it and then uh, we'll pick back up from there. All right, so after some careful consideration, I've chosen to mount my module right here on the side of the, the intake pipe. I think it's a good spot. Um, then I can kind of tuck the, the wiring down beside the air box here because I don't want, I mean, it's not the prettiest looking engine bay in the first place, but I just, I didn't want really exposed wiring sitting on top like some people install it. Uh, I want to try and tuck this away and keep this tight to the top of the airbox as much as possible. I wipe this down real quick to get any oils or greases off of it. And then it's just some double-sided tape that they include on the back of the module to stick on there. All right, I got the bypass mounted here. The module is right here. I think that's a pretty good location for it. You can't really see much of the wire exposed. It runs in underneath here. It's not coming into contact with anything that moves. It's out of the way. It's nice and cool. Um, and then clean up top here. So it actually looks like it's meant to be there. It doesn't even really stand out. So now for the second part of the install, we need to connect the starter relay wire. And according to the instructions here, it's usually labeled as ST or STA on these Toyotas. So if I look in here in the fuse box, we got STA right here, which is this purple guy. So we're gonna have to be really careful pulling this out because these things like to break and they're usually in there pretty tight. So I'm gonna work away with a, just maybe just a tiny screwdriver or something just to try and pry it out really gently, but you're gonna wanna take your time with this. Don't break it off, don't, uh, don't cause any damage, just be patient. So I have my purple wire here that they've included and we've got the end stripped. We're gonna do kind of a test first before we fully connect everything. So according to the instructions, we wanna connect it to this terminal right here. We don't wanna to touch either of these copper terminals on the relay. Uh, if you do that, it's gonna fry the bypass module. So we only want it to touch this one, according to that picture. It's this one on the top right when we have it situated the same way. So I'm gonna wrap this around this terminal for right now so we can test out to make sure we're in the right spot. Okay, so you can see we've connected to the terminal here, just like they have in the instructions. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in and we're gonna use a voltmeter to test the other end of we're gonna plug the voltmeter into this guy and we're gonna turn the engine on because we wanna make sure that that terminal is getting 12 volts when the starter is going and then drops back down to less than a volt or nothing once the engine is running because we only want this to trigger it to turn it on. So we're gonna double check that before we finalize our wiring. All right, so far the hardest part of this install was actually figuring out how to film <laughs> that clip. Forgive me for my ghetto voltmeter. Uh, my other one is not working. So anyways, what I did was obviously I'm, I'm plugged into the, the purple wire that we're adding. And then for this test, so, so that I could reach the key and also have a place to put my camera. And then I just grounded this bolt right here on this door catch. Okay, there we go, we're done. We've got the wire tightly run as clean as I can get it at least without getting a bunch of uh, wire loom and running it through. I'm not gonna bother doing that, but uh, I think it looks 
maybe not factory, but it looks pretty clean. See, you've got the module here mounted out of the way, and then the wiring is running behind the air box here, and I have it zip tied along this wiring up to the fender, and then runs across the weather stripping, and then back down into the fuse box for that relay wire. Now, I think they claim that this takes about 30 minutes to install, and I'm probably closer to an hour, but to be honest, that's that's got nothing to do with actually working on the truck. That's, as with anything else in YouTube world, that's just because I'm filming while I'm trying to actually work on the truck. So uh, the install was just as easy as they claimed it was gonna be. I didn't run into any problems or anything that I had to kind of troubleshoot or brainstorm. As far as I know, this is the only secondary air injection system bypass kit that is plug and play. Um, it requires no wiring, no connections, no soldering, no cutting or anything. Um, to be honest, I didn't even have to, this, this purple wire, I didn't even have to shorten this and it was already spliced. Like <laughs> I did not even break out a wire cutter to do this install. This is literally plug and play. Uh, so you can't go wrong there. If you guys are looking to bypass your, your air injection system, I think Hewitt Tech is the way to go. I'm going to put a bunch of links down in the description of documentation. They sent me a few, um, a few documents just explaining the differences between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 kit and just basically everything you need to know about um, trouble codes and which kit you need, how the system works, um, just everything to know about bypassing the system. So I'm going to put all that stuff down in the description below. Uh, feel free to check it out if you want to. Aside from that, that's one more project finished on the 4Runner and we're essentially making a ridiculously reliable vehicle even more reliable. So. <laughs> If you ask me, that's good stuff. Anyways, uh, thanks for hanging out in the garage with me today, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.